Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to explain the exercises 8, 9 and 11 which uh, belong to chapter 2, Thinking Like an Economist. This is a book which is labeled Principles of Economics by Gregory Mack. So the 8 the eight point it says classify each of the statements in table 2-2 as positive normative or ambiguous explain so I must admit that they are really ambiguous but this was like what I think maybe maybe it's not like 100% answer actually I have just like search and there are different people that they say about this point so let's see so the first says a sailing on brands reduces the quantity and quality of housing available so the first thing is they're talking about the quantity when we put a sailing on brands more than we will see this in like a head we know the 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 price the market is going to be altered it's going to be changed so in this case the quantity is going to be modified but when we talk about more a little bit more quality uh, it's kind of normative but in general i i can say that when we are talking because it's is more uh, this is more more like um this descriptive uh, statement i can say that this part uh, could be positive okay positive the second point it says tariffs and import quotas usually reduce general economic welfare so this is a fact so this is this is the, even if even this is a fact uh, we are we are talking about usually and reduce so we are talking about effect at first I thought it was more positive part but when we think about this more prescriptive point of view and it's not a concrete statement so we are talking about something more general so in this case we classify it as normative uh, here we see the third which is flexible and floating exchange rates offer an effective international monetary arrangement so I, I, I can say that it's like a prescriptive argument uh, but it's not supported by data in statements. It's kind of ambiguous. So maybe if I can say that the flexible and floating change uh, allow to the economy to uh, to increase the exports, for example, in 10%. This is a fact. It could be more positive. In this case, I cannot say neither positive nor um, normative fiscal policy like uh, tax cut and or government expenditure increase has a significant stimulative impact on a less than fully employed economy so I'm, i must say this kind of normative part because we are talking stimulative impact and positive part because uh, we're talking about a fact of expenditure increase. So for me, it's not clear which positive or normative, so I will classify as ambiguous. The fifth question is, in the federal, bu federal budget is to be balanced, it should be done over the business cycle rather than yearly. So this is clear because we are talking about should be done it's like a policy advice when we talk about policy advice we are talking about normative argument the next says cash payments increase the welfare of recipients to a greater degree than do trans transfers in kind of equal cash value so it is supported i guess by data it's a fact is a logical like a uh, consequence of the cash payments so it's a descriptive statement um, even we are talking a little bit about prescriptive environment i must say it's positive the seventh large federal budget deficit has an adverse effect on the economy this is a point of view because we are saying that the 
there is a large feather but definitely has an adverse effect so we are talking more about normative argument and the next uh, a minimum wage increases unemployment among young and unskilled workers so when we see the data this is true and we are talking more about statements so in this case more descriptive idea so I would say positive argument and the government should restructure the welfare system along the lines of a negative income tax so once once again we are talking about should so it's like normative statements is more is more about policy advice and the last one if when taxes and market table pollution permits present a better approach to pollution control than imposition of pollution sale so we are talking about more uh, uh, subject position so we are in normative normative set uh, the next is about if you were president would you be more interested in your economic advisors positive views or their normative views so in both cases because once on one on the on one hand I have like the normative views would offer some policy advices which I maybe can take the one what I considered best which fixed better in the other part the positive views provide us the data provides the real fact provide the science before or beyond the data so in these cases this is necessary first to have the positive positive statements in order to make decision throughout normative views and eleventh, who is the current chairman of the federal reserve R reserve yeah, the Federal Reserve. We have the the Janet, the Doctor Janet Yellen. Uh, she started in February third, two thousand fourteen. She's going to be until the fe February the third, twenty eighteen. Doctor Yellen has written on a wide variety of economic issues, while well, specializing in causes, mechanisms, and implication of unemployment. And here. She is. The other <coughs> is the current uh, chair of the Council of Economic Advisors. He is the Jason Furman. Uh, she, she he confirmed on the first August in 2013, and Furman held a variety of posts in public policy and research before his work with President Obama. And the last one, the Secretary of the Treasury is Jack Liu and he is in the in position since February 2013 and just like for increase a little more idea the Secretary of the Treasury is the principal economic advisor to the President and plays a critical role in policy making by bringing an economic and government financial policy perspective to issues facing the government so that's all for this video I hope it has worth for you and great success with economics and see you the next video